I'm a hacker. It's true. Have been all my life. Since my youngest days when I took apart my toys to figure out how they worked, to my preteens when I bought my first computer and hacked a dial-up community service, to the last 15 years of my career, which I've spent helping organizations secure their computer systems. My, like many of us in technology, though, my path through security has been more a result of a series of serendipitous events than any carefully laid out career plan. In fact, my ability to go from a pre-med major with dreams of being a surgeon to a software programmer was really more the result of a hiring manager who saw how the skills that I had developed in other industries would be valuable assets to developing banking software. So I find myself wondering quite often, do, how many hiring managers have this same wisdom? How many of them could take a barista from a local coffee shop, for instance, and see how their skills relate to a job in security? Now, if you follow technology news, and in particular around security, you've no doubt seen the headlines talking about the supposed skills gap or talent shortage. Cybersecurity, this industry that's focused on ensuring that the digital systems that run our very lives are protected from attackers who would seek to destroy them or to manipulate them, struggles to find the talent that we need to fill those jobs. In fact, some estimates say there will be as many as 4 million unfilled jobs at the end of this year. And yet, when I talk to people who are trying to launch a career in cybersecurity, they tell me that even after they get a degree, maybe an industry certification, maybe even demonstrate practical skills, that they can't find these jobs. I sensed this dissonance between what I was hearing from hiring organizations and what I was hearing from those people who are trying to start their careers. And so in 2020, I set about to try to find some answers. I surveyed thousands of aspiring and experienced cybersecurity professionals. I interviewed countless hiring managers and recruiters. I even looked at job descriptions that were available online, all with the intent of trying to figure out what was going on and causing this disconnect. The reality of what I found is that most of the problems we have hiring in technology are self-inflicted a result of unrealistic expectations that have created an unsustainable workforce model. So let me share with you some of what I found in my research and some ideas for what organizations can do to start to address this problem. Initially, my research was focused on job seekers. I thought if I could just figure out what it is that they're doing wrong, I could find some solutions for them and help them overcome. So one of the key questions on the survey was about their job search experience. And while maybe the experience of those aspiring professionals isn't so alarming, it's what happens with experienced professionals that makes my research more poignant. You see, two thirds of aspiring job seekers will spend four months or more looking for that first job. Again, maybe not surprising, it's entry-level jobs, but remember this is an industry that says it has four million unfilled jobs. However, when it comes to those experienced professionals with demonstrated expertise, they too, 56% of the time, will spend four months or longer looking for a job. And when I asked both groups what the obstacles were that stood in their way, the overwhelming answer was bad job descriptions. So I looked at job descriptions and what I found was a disturbing pattern of behaviors. I saw internships that specified a requirement of three to five years in the industry. Entry level positions that called for the candidate to have a certification that is only issued to somebody with five or more years of experience. I even saw job descriptions that called for 10 years of experience in technologies that only existed for six. 
And in reality, these aren't exceptional edge cases. These are the majority of the job descriptions out there today. And as I struggled with why is this happening, it was one job description in particular that stood out with some answers. You see, this job description went on for three pages, describing in intricate detail all of the various responsibilities of this particular role, and then subsequently the mountainous, almost impossible number of technologies that the candidate would need to have expertise in. Who is this unicorn that's going to fill a job like that? Taking a more methodical look at job descriptions, I found that 91% of cybersecurity jobs require a degree and at minimum one industry certification. I broke that down further, looked at entry level. 71% of those entry level jobs had requirements of three or more years experience and a CISSP or equivalent certification. Let me add some context for you about this CISSP. It stands for Certified Information Systems Security Professional. It's a cybersecurity degree that's issued by a nonprofit training organization called ISC Squared. This certification requires not only passing a stringent exam that covers all of the domains of cybersecurity, it also requires that the candidate have a minimum of five years in security-related job roles. ISC Squared, in their annual workforce study for 2020, estimated that there's about 2.8 million cybersecurity professionals in the world. However, according to statistics on their website, as of October 2020, only 142,000 of those professionals had a CISSP degree or a certification. That's only 5%. Do you see the issue? Therein lies the problem when we hire in technology. Our job descriptions, in an effort to form objective criteria, focus deeply on minutiae while missing the bigger picture of what makes a candidate successful. Our job descriptions are hyper focused on defining all of the technologies that we use in our organizations, and then finding candidates who can come in immediately and expertly configure, develop, optimize, and deploy those systems without any form of on-the-job learning. Perhaps that's valid if you're hiring for a senior level position, but when that standard is applied across all of our roles, that's simply not sustainable. Cybersecurity, for its part, operates under this flawed set of expectations that we're going to somehow be perfect in defending all of our systems. That's just not realistic, and it leads to unrealistic hiring practices. Indeed, as I look at the job descriptions and I talk to those hiring managers, there's this prevalent belief that anyone hired into a cybersecurity role must already come in with existing deep expertise in technologies and techniques that will be used in that role. You don't see this in any other industry. Doctors, for instance, go through years of a structured progression of on-the-job learning, and they're responsible for human lives. Plumbers, electricians, other skilled trades, they go through years of apprenticeship to learn their craft on the job. So why don't we apply this same approach when it comes to cybersecurity? The sad truth for security is that our success is not based on technology expertise. That's not even a primary factor. It's the strength of our problem-solving skills that makes us successful in cybersecurity roles. And to that end, we need a community of diverse people with varied backgrounds and ideals and experiences who can bring that to bear and help augment our problem-solving capability collectively. So when we hire for these positions, we need to stop focusing on deep technical expertise in very specific technologies and instead focus on the skills that I refer to as core transferable skills, the skills that transcend any individual industry. Let me share with you an example of what I mean. 
Over the course of my career, I've had the opportunity to build many successful teams. And it was while I was leading the consulting organization for one particular company that I received a resume from a gentleman who had no technology experience whatsoever. He had worked mostly in retail, but his resume indicated to me that he had a strong passion for technology and a deep hunger to learn cybersecurity. As I looked at the rest of his resume, I saw that he had a couple things that stood out. First was his customer service skills. The ability to empathetically understand your customer and to communicate with them in a way that's meaningful to them is a crucial skill that we wish more in security had today. Additionally, he talked about how he was able to innovate and problem solve when he was faced with issues that affected the delivery of products and services. Specifically, he talked about a time that he identified an issue in their inventory processing that was impacting their return system. It's that ability to see the relationships between disparate systems, to see how seemingly unrelated processes can impact one another that's crucial and at the foundation of any good cybersecurity professional. And this model holds true when we go back to our barista example from earlier. Think about it, baristas are called upon to process multiple inputs from various sources very quickly and to turn those into tasks and to take those tasks and prioritize them and execute them in the most efficient way possible. And on top of that, they also have to plan and execute maintenance activities. This is a crucial path that cybersecurity professionals go down every day. It's something that we do all the time. Now, of course, this isn't to say that every barista or retail employee is going to make a good cybersecurity professional. However, in this case, I was able to keep my mind open. And after I verified that he had the technical aptitude and the hunger to learn, I brought him in for an interview, I ended up hiring him, and he's been a very successful candidate ever since. This is the way we need to start hiring in our industry. We need to look for those crucial skills and then seek to build our employees. To make this vision happen, organizations have to renew their commitment to developing their people. You see, ISC Squared in their workforce study tells us that the two primary influencers on success in cybersecurity are on-the-job learning and a structured training program. However, they also found that while 81% of security professionals said they needed more training, only 46% of their organizations were planning to actually increase expenditures on that training. This is a disconnect that we as leaders in this space need to take more seriously. Now, while organizations do have their part to play, there are things that aspiring professionals can do today. Many in the industry will tell those aspiring professionals that they should seek a mentor or get a degree or get certifications. But according to my research, I found there was no correlation between those activities and a shortened job search. So while those activities are valuable for professional development, they aren't necessarily going to help you find a job any faster. I suggest that people be more creative in how they demonstrate their skills. Many of my peers will tell people they should do individual research and, and build labs and work in those spaces and learn the craft. And that's great. Those are good ideas, except that they don't translate well to a resume. So I say they take it to another level. Create blogs, video content, other online content. Demonstrate their mastery by creating this instructional content that can be used across the industry. It's far easier and more credible to demonstrate your skills as an online content creator than some less tangible self-study you did. For those that can manage it, I even suggest that they reach out to local small companies and nonprofits that likely need some help with cybersecurity anyway and offer to do projects for them on a reduced rate or pro bono basis. Again, those are experiences that translate more easily to a resume. 
But this is all just band-aid solutions and we really need organizations to become part of addressing this disconnect. In order to fix the problems that we have hiring in technology and insecurity part in particular, we need to renew our focus on those core transferable skills that are the truest measure of candidate success. Organizations need to be active players in addressing the unrealistic job descriptions and ex expectations in hiring. They need to take meaningful action to create a more sustainable workforce. We as leaders in technology have the opportunity to help address this issue by recognizing that hidden connection that exists between a great cup of coffee and a great cybersecurity defender. Thank you so much for your time.